today we're gonna be changing up gears a little bit. Um, I'm in the middle of working on Gabriel's uh, project right now. But uh, in between that, I have a show coming up and I can't really work on Gabriel's car on the weekdays. Um, so what we're gonna be working on and what I'm gonna be covering here is um, basically, I am gonna be installing an AC tuck kit for this car. And the reason for that is because it is hot as hell. I don't have AC at the moment because uh, basically with the new piping and everything, it just kind of gets in the way. So like you can see here, I have the AC lines still sitting there. I think I've mentioned it in another video. The only reason that they're there is so I can keep crap from going into the EVAP core, which is back there. And uh, the time has come to finally remove these and put the AC tuck kit in here. What that does is basically the AC lines are gonna come out from there, route over towards the fender and around into the front bumper area. And that is going to allow for, um, it's gonna allow for the lines to route all the way through here and come straight out here to the compressor. That way they're not in the way and they're flexible. They're gonna be just like these. But unfortunately they come out towards the, the passenger side. So for me to be able to install these lines, this has to go and this might have to go. I'm gonna try to work out a way to where I keep that in place. But uh, for the most part, it might have to go. So um, I already kind of started taking the plastics and stuff out of the back because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it down the passenger side all the way into the trunk. But uh, for now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this, we're gonna remove the tray, get all that crap out of here. All right, so you can see batteries out. You can see my uh, right wire harness there and where we routed it through. These are the lines that are gonna have to come out here. It's quite a bit of corrosion coming out from that battery. So I'm probably gonna end up having to replace it after this, but good thing about having it in the trunk is that I can pretty much get whatever battery I want. So yeah, that's gotta get rinsed off and cleaned off. And uh, luckily it got painted, it's got fresh paint on it. So it won't be anything to wipe it down and clean it up. But, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do, cause I can either run the battery cable through there, but then you'll see it. So I think the best way is gonna be to route it through here with the rest of the wires. I just don't know if there's gonna be enough room. And I guess I'll just have to try and see what happens. And then we also got these here. Um, once you run with the right wire harness, these get eliminated. You end up not using any of these. So they end up just kind of sitting here. Um, I don't necessarily just want to like clip them though, but that might be something that I might have to do. The thing that sucks is that that actually goes to the chassis harness of the car. So it's like one of those things where it's like, ugh, once you clip them, eh, I don't know. Might be able to tape them up and loom, loom them up and hide them, or I might be able to tuck them out of the way some other way. Maybe I can run that harness down past these ABS lines and just tuck it up against like the bracket there. And then when the car's at a show or something, people won't really see it. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and start running the power wire through here and see if it can make it through. And uh, the goal for today is just to get the, uh, just to get the, uh, just to get the battery relocated. And then so we can move forward from there. Just to update y'all, cause I'm doing a really bad job and I've been on the phone for a minute. So there's a distribution block that I got. If you go on Amazon, you type in uh, power distribution block. You'll see a few items like that. The one that I ordered is a kit. So it comes with like all these screws and all this other stuff. They sent you these so you could tap them. But what I ended up doing was I found a size 10 bolt here on my shock tower. So if you have an Integra or EG, you'll be able to find these. Um, so I bolted right there. I had to open up the holes to make a match. And then I found this bracket that was here not being used. I straightened it out, bolted the bracket to the shock tower, bolted this to the bracket. And then, so I've got my fuse box power and the ABS power crimped together and coming up here. And then, um, I just ran a starter. My starter cable used to come up and over the transmission. It was really ugly. So I ran it under the transmission 
and up between these ABS lines and then right up on here. So let me just put the crush washer. I wish I wouldn't have dropped that because I've already picked it up twice. Hold on. But like I was saying, yeah, so this just goes on here and then go ahead and secure our nut on here. And then we just want to make sure that uh, all the wires are pointed like straight down because uh, you get this little cover, this little cap, this guy right here. And then as you can see, it's got spaces. So what you want to do is uh, once that's on there, you want to make sure, see, that the wires just kind of come out of the bottom here. And then, so I've got them too. I think that's all that I have to run in there. This is an alternator wire. I'm going to have to reroute this later. But for now, I've got these two done. I've got my starter wire coming up. The last one is going to be the red wire for the battery. That one's going to come off this middle one here. And then we're going to route that right through this grommet here and straight into the back. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. It's another day. So... You can probably tell this video is a really short one. Oh, hold on. This relocation is basically done. I didn't film too much more after that last clip because it's really simple. No, oh, hold on. <coughs> Come on, passenger side. There we go. All right, so. probably pop the trunk too right so you guys can see what that ended up looking like Ooh. all right trunk is popped now let me get the hood popped don't mind my hand okay and so this is where so Here's the terminal block. Um, everything is installed still the same way. Got the three leads coming out from there. I did upgrade my uh, alternator harness because the harness that was there was cooked. So I went ahead and made a new one. I haven't moved this yet. I'm gonna take it off here in a little bit and just get rid of it. And um, yeah, so while I was at work, I went ahead and made this harness. Where is this running now? Yeah, so it's running like down, like right over the rack. And then it just runs across over the T bracket to the other side. ¿Cómo está quedando? Ya parejo. Todavía le falta. All right, so. Yeah, so there you go. Wire got fed through there. I ran it under the carpet here, along with the rest of the harness of the car. You'll see it, it'll run in there and then up through this plastic panel here. And into the back here, you can see it coming down through the shock tower right here. And then it just comes out from the bottom here. And uh, that's my battery box right there. It's not situated yet because Gabriel actually gifted me a metal one. Um, that I'm probably gonna go ahead and drill a hole. Shane has a rib nut tool, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and drill the holes and go ahead and install the rib nuts. That way I can just use like that hardware right there and tighten it down. And um, I'm hoping I brought that EF uh, carpet from the storage because it's in really good shape. I wanna go ahead and clean it up really good and paint it black and use that for back here. And I really have to clean this interior back here. Um, the wood that was under there got all messed up. So I'm probably gonna go to Home Depot, grab some PVC board and just make a custom uh, like platform back here. And I do have a, a speaker that I wanna put back here, but I wanna get a capacitor for it first so I don't kill my battery running that speaker. Um, as far as where I hooks my ground up to, luckily for us Integra guys, I don't know about EGs, but there is like a random thread right there. So what I ended up doing was I uh, just went ahead and peeled the paint off of that and I just ran my ground right there and that's it. And it runs out of the side of this plastic cover. And if you clip the cover, see, it's flush. 
So that's basically all I did. The hardest part was what I showed you guys in the beginning, which was installing that distribution block in the front there. Everything else after that, getting the wire to the back. Once you have all that set up and squared away, everything else is really easy. One more thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and uh, I never really gave you guys any, uh, any kind of closure on, is my cooling issues that I was chasing with this car. So, if you remember, closed. I don't know how many videos ago, but we were chasing uh, overheating issues. I want to say maybe it was three or four videos ago. We were chasing overheating issues with this car. I changed the uh, water pump, went back to the LS water pump. Um, I had somebody explain to me more in detail what the difference is between the non VTEC pumps and the VTEC pumps. With the VTEC pumps, you have the 22 teeth on the water pump idler with the uh well the pulley the uh, non vtech ones have 19 teeth i thought that because it had 22 teeth it would flow faster but i'm not too bright the 22 teeth actually means that it will flow slower so with it flowing slower um it means that basically at higher rpms you will actually have a higher potential of the water absorbing your heat, which is basically for VTEC engines. Um, for my uh, specific engine setup that I have right now, the non VTEC water pump will actually benefit me more because I don't rev past 7,600 RPMs. So therefore, because this car is mostly a daily driver and I do drive it on the street a lot, and it is really hot here in Florida, it benefits me a lot more to have the slower flowing pump or the faster flowing pump to actually get the water circulating and moving through the system so i have better heat exchange um i don't know if that was exactly what had to do with my issue because i did notice that in the radiator with the vtec pump i barely had any flow at all with the ls non vtec pump i have a ton of flow even on idle so <clears throat> It did help, but that wasn't what solved everything. The second thing that I did was, in the same video, I pulled the thermostat out. I drilled two holes. I drilled them across from each other. So literally 180 degrees from each other. Now, I don't know how much that did because once I ended up putting the gasket, the gasket kind of covered like part of the holes on both sides. However, that did also help reduce the temperature. I was able to get the car to come down to about 215. On a regular day, me driving to work, um, the car was reaching temperatures of about 28, 230. Usually by the time that I was like getting home, I would get my check engine light saying that I was overheating and it would show temperatures of about 230. So um, now I was only getting to about 215 to 18. I think the worst that it got was like 219, which still isn't really where I wanted to be at because um the honda manual basically says that the car typically runs on the higher side about 209 ish so the next thing that i realized was that i did have a slim fan and it was an ebay slim fan um i used to run an ek oem fan with the shroud cut a little bit to clear my turbo there um, so I put a slim fan thinking that faster CFMs would be better. I think that fan with the heat from the turbo and stuff, the blades were starting to get distorted. What I ended up doing was I went with my favorite cooling company, Mishimoto, got myself one of their fans with their shroud setup. That was basically the last thing that I planned on doing that I hadn't done. <sighs> went ahead and got a deal on that on eBay. I think it was like 150, 160, something like that. Ordered it up. And uh, ever since then, this car doesn't pass 208, which, and that's on a really hot day. That's on a really hot day, me driving really spiritedly. So it's safe to say that now with this Mishimoto fan and shroud, my temperature issues have been solved. So now, had I not done everything else and just put this fan on, would that have helped my temperature? maybe i feel like it would still be a little bit higher maybe it would have reached like 215 which still isn't the end of the world on these motors um i've seen some people that live in arizona and say that they see temperatures of like 220 on these in the summertime um but 
definitely I feel that that water pump is helping out a lot. I feel that the holes in the uh, thermostat are helping out a lot. They allow a little bit of water to flow through. Um, and I also feel that the fan and the shroud is a must have. Do you need a Mishimoto one? Absolutely not. I've seen people that do it with an eBay setup. They get an eBay shroud and, uh, and an eBay fan. And as long as they have it set up correctly and it's a decent amount of CFM, they get by just fine. Um, I just happen to really like Mishimoto. I mean, if you couldn't tell. So I seen that they had that for about 160 ish, which is only about $60 more than like an eBay setup. Um, so I went with that. But uh, as long as you get yourself a good setup, then you should be good to go. And I would definitely recommend make sure you get yourself a shroud and a fan. But so with that being said, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the battery relocation. Um, very simple thing to do, especially with that power distribution block. Um, I know a lot of the future projects that I do from now on that require me moving a battery to the trunk, that block is gonna make it hella easier. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed following me throughout this whole, all my episodes, um, whether it's uh, building the engines for Gabriel's cars, working on all the different projects, chasing the overheating issues with this car. Um, if you like these kind of videos, if you like this video specifically, make sure that you guys go down and hit the like button. Um, if you're not subscribed and you're watching all my videos, go ahead and subscribe and remember to hit the bell notification because I don't really have a consistent upload schedule. It just depends on what kind of time I have. Right now I'm off school, so I have a little more time to upload a lot more stuff, which is why you're seeing three videos this week, like back to back to back. And then other times when I don't have as much time, I'll upload like once a week or once every two weeks. So if you have that bell notification put on every single time that I upload, you'll be notified. Um, and also, don't forget to share these videos with your friends. Uh, we're trying to get the channel to grow. We're trying to get like better reach and stuff like that. So um, any little thing that you do, like sharing or subscribing will help. And if you have any questions or if you just want to comment on something, feel free to use the comment board below. So, but with, oh, and also don't forget to, uh, don't forget to hit up Tokyo Drips and, uh, get some fire shirts off of them. I know I'm due for another order, so, uh, make sure you hit them up. Uh, the link is in the description below in every single one of my videos. And if you use my code Project B Team, you get 15% off any order. Um, so with that being said, the mosquitoes are killing me. I'm going outside. I will check you guys out on the next one.